Hey everybody, this is Eva from the Essential Guide to Digital Jewelry Design and welcome back to our channel. Um, if you're watching today, uh, we are going to go through a uh, exercise to make a tri-stone twist ring. Three big stones, a middle big center stone with two side stones and a shank that's got a little twist in it with four claws on each stone. Okay, should we get started? I'm going to go fetch my curve. Uh, circle curve tool and in my front viewport I'm going to use my zero point as my center and in my command uh, command prompt line I'm going to click on circumference and back in my front viewport with my mouse I'm going to type in 54 if you don't do that it will create the circle in a different view so here we go got our ring size next thing we're going to do is we are going to make an offset of that curve and I'm going to do that in my curves layer. I'm going to go over to my curves layer. I'm going to use the offset curve and I am going to use a distance of one to start with. Actually, yeah, one is good. And I'm going to make another one for two um, from the original ring. There we go. So we've got one, two millimeters here, offset curves. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to head up over to Grasshopper Gold. I've got it up here in my, in my dock. And I'm going to use, in the jewelry setting, the Choose Stone uh, command. which is going to open Grasshopper, so you've got to give it a little moment. And once it's open, we are going to pick out the oval shape. Here it comes. There we go. So, oval shape. And I'm going to use the size 8, and eight by 6. So, we'll create that one. And then my side stones are going to be each 7, 5. And create that too. Just need to create one of those we're just going to mirror the other one over so let's lift both these stones up and i'm going to place the stone exactly with a point on the one millimeter offset curve so when i was one millimeter away from the the, the finger and the side stones we are going to turn i'm just going to bring it down as well so 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 one millimeter away and we're going to relocate our gumball by clicking on this little white circle in the gumball click on relocate gumball and you can type in zero so that's on my zero point in my axis and just going to rotate that over using the rotate tool on the gumball and from the let jump back from the top viewport, I can see how far away the stone is from the other stone. So we can change this to shaded viewport. And in our oval layer, I'm just going to make that opaque 100%. I like not being able to see through the stones. Okay, there we go. And what we're going to do is mirror that other one over. Okay, and there we go, got our stone layout. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create the settings for these stones. So we're going to head out over to settings. And I am noticing that I have a little oval surface here. Uh, don't know what that's from, but I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to switch this off for a second. Ah, it extruded the curve that the gem tool created. Ah, well, actually, we can use that to our advantage. Let's just go over to the inside surface. And we are going to move that inside surface over to our side stone. Relocate the gumball again, like we did with the other. And rotate that inside curve over. Pop 
move it a bit up to the side okay and why am i doing this well i'm going to mirror that over to the other side as well Sarah. and for our next step we can switch the stones off itch in my eye and I am going to create a curve from these three small extrusions so duplicate the edges on these and delete the surfaces they are not important they were just nice nice smooth surfaces to create curves out of and let's put the stones back on again okay and we are going to use these three curves to extrude surface closed surface to a point so we're going to go to the solids tools and go to extrude curve to point not extrude surface to point extrude curve to point and we're just going to bring that down to zero. Okay. And as you can see, these are obviously not made, these are not optimal for, for the stones because they are exactly the same size as the stone, right? So what we actually want is we want material around the stone so that we can make the claws. But what's nice is you can just grab your object because they are closed surfaces. Uh, close valid poly surfaces and we are going to use offset surface to create a solid um, with a offset of or a distance of uh, a 0.85 that's going to be the thickness of our prongs so just say yes to that uh, Okay, now I'm wondering if that's not a bit too thick for the side ones. I think for the side ones we maybe opt for 0 0.65, 0 0.65, that's good. Okay, now I'll go back to a ghosted viewport and put off the stone and you can delete the inside cone. And from the side view, front view, or back view, we are going to grab all three poly surfaces and we are going to use the wire cut tool to cut that inside away. So the cutting curve, now I go to the top view and I make sure that both sides are on and I extrude that and it bangs a hole right through those. Okay, great. So, put our stones back on. The next thing we want to do is we want to cut uh, the seat for our stone. So I'm going to go back to Grasshopper Gold and we are going to go to Cutters. And at Cutters we just use the very first gem cutter. And we select our three stones. And select gems. Why the one on the left looks odd is because it was a mirrored object. And in Grasshopper, when you mirror objects, they kind of do the reverse of what they should usually do, um, like a mirror. So we'll just delete that afterwards and, and mirror the other one through. But let's have a look here now at how this looks. So we could probably make the scale just a tad bit bigger. We don't want it seeing through our stone. So we'll just increase the size a bit. And and move that Z offset down, ungroup that, delete the one on the side we don't need, mirror the other one over. Just going to mirror the other one over, so from the zero point, uh, zero. Okay. And let's just boolean those cutters right out. 
of our surfaces. So, yeah. Okay, I'm going to go back into shaded viewport. There we go, got the hole. There we go. And uh, let's just switch the stone off for a second. I'm also going to turn the opacity up to 100 for the cutters. And what I'm going to do here to open that up a little bit is I'm going to both chamfer the inside edge of the setting and then I'm going to fill it the outside edge for a smooth finish. So one is too big and to change all of these, I'll just go up to my command line and set all and I'm going to set those all to 0.3. That opens that up nicely. And what we'll do for the outside is we will use the fillet edge for the outside of our settings gives it a nice rounded smooth looking finish so good for casting um, make that 0.25 Let's see if that's not too much that's fine ah it's not taking that over here so we can do that on the top surface so 0.25 but for the smaller ones we'll look at a Maybe a smaller, smaller fillet. Let's try point two. Hmm. That's curious. Why is that happening? Okay, so if you're having the same trouble I'm having, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch off my stones. I'm just going to... Ah, that's why. Because there is a... a cut for the stone. Okay, so let's go back. We're going to fill it this one using a smaller fillet radius. We'll use 0.15 and there we go. Okay, great. So next step, we are going to create the cutter tools that will create the, 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 the prongs for our, for our stones. And in order to do that, um, what I'm going to do, because I'm going to make those by hand, uh, instead of using the grasshopper gold tool, I am going to create a rectangle from my front viewport using the width of the table of my stone. So I'm just going to click the width of the table of my stone and I'm going to use my offset curb as my marker for where my rectangle should end. So that makes it exactly one millimeter away from the finger again and we're going to pull that rectangle out nice and long so that it extends past the past the edge and we are going to sub select the top of our rectangle by pressing control shift uh, on our keyboard and then selecting the surface so control sit Control shift is pressed and then press the surface you want. And we're just going to use the gumball to bring that out a bit. Bring it in a little bit. This kind of follows the line of the ISO curve on the setting. And on the, on the bottom, what we're going to do is we're going to fillet those two edges. So we get a nice rounded end on the bottom. So we want it to be maybe about 1.7 let's have a look here you see that's nice uh, but we could maybe even go smaller so um, could also surface select the bottom surface and just 
pull that in, see if that works. Yep, that's working. Okay, okay, that's looking good. And then the for last thing we're going to do here is we are going to make this a bit longer, bring it up, and before we do anything more with this, we're going to make a copy of it in the perpendicular direction. So we're going to press on Alt in our top viewport. We're going to press on Alt and click on our arc on our gumball, and we're going to punch in 90 and you'll see you now have a copy in the opposite direction. I'm just going to extrude that out in the X direction and then in the side view we are going to use our transform bend tool and the center of our object as our start of our spine. We click in the center I'm just going to switch off our O snaps down here and using your shift and pulling out to one side can be left or can be right. Uh, just pull out a, a line. Don't extend past the extrusion. Stay within the extrusion around right about to the end of the setting. And now ooh, you see some things not happening on both sides, only on one side. We're going to go up to our command line. We're just going to put symmetric on yes. Now you see both sides are, are, are dipping down, bending. We just click it like that, and we've got a little channel for our one direction. We can make that a bit narrower. Make it even a bit narrower than that, yeah? And with this, uh, with the original cutter, what we're going to still do is go to transform cage edit and we're going to use a bounding box control object. We're going to use the world as our coordinate system and where we have our x, y, z count, uh, point count, we are going to go to the y and change that to 6 and the rest can stay as is and just press enter and uh, you have a global region. And now you have your little cage edit box. Selecting the inside points, just the inside points. We're going to bring that in, you know, pinch that in, start having this kind of uh, uh, um, pinched object in the center. Um, you can flare out the outside a bit, the outside points. And I would even dare to say I could do the same for the points just beyond that. Yeah, that's good. Okay. And we are going to rotate that object using the same format that we used for, for the um, stones and the settings on the side. We're going to just relocate that gumbel to the zero axis and press alt and hold on that arc and just rotate that object downwards and you'll see that center line you want it on that center line of the setting so now when we look at it from the top it should be in the center of the stone it but we're not finished yet. We also want to scale this down. So what we're going to do is we're going to scale it both lengthwise and sidewise. But don't scale the depth. Don't scale the depth because you want that one millimeter along the bottom to stay consistent. So there you go. That should be sufficient that should be sufficient to create the claw so now let's go back to mirror again oh, what am i doing enter zero and next thing we're going to do is cut these cutters boolean difference them out of our settings so 
select your settings. First, we're going to do the center. Uh, and center okay and the same with the, the lengthwise okay and here you have all your settings now at some point um, maybe your setter won't be happy that these prongs are so close to one another if that is the case uh, what you can do is um, relocate using the relocate gumball you can rotate that setting out a little bit to the side Not too much, just give him a little bit of space to put the saw in. It's enough space to put the saw in and to clean out. This one doesn't follow, so we're just going to have to mirror the other one back again. There we go. Okay, great. And there should be enough material underneath them as well. Let's just switch off our stones and have a look at what's happening inside. It looks clean. And let's make sure, yeah, the stones have got a nice seat. Okay. Let's pull in those three settings together. If that doesn't want to pull in, just do one at a time. Ah, so let's have a look here. There must be a problem with this. You just got to analyze edge tools, show edges. And we want to see all our naked edges. There's nothing wrong. So what is it that's causing this problem? I suspect it's these manifold edges. Uh, so we're just going to lift that by 0 0.001. 0 0.01. There we go. And now it should do the, the bullion without a problem. There we go. So if ever you have problems trying to bullion things together, and it's because they are almost entirely overlapping on the same surface, that's manifold. You just nudge your object by a hair of a millimeter, and, and that should uh, take care of the problem. OK, so now w next step, we are going to extrude the ring size curve just beyond the settings um, and with that and this is not a surface we want no surface here with that surface let's do that from the top viewport we're going to UV unwrap that first thing to check though is the seam of your surface so the seam of my surface is here on the side I want that on the bottom so we're just going to rotate this object by 90 and you see the arrows are already in the right direction and now our seam should be wait a second yeah seam is at the bottom now okay giddy giddy so let's unwrap that so we're going to go over to uv uh, surfaces from uh, uh, curves from surfaces and go to create uv curves and press enter and now we have our surface uh, uv curve we're going to fill that in with a surface from planar curves and what we're going to do with that is we are going to take our stones and our settings and we are going to flow those along that surface 
We go to our deformation tools under our move tools. And we click on flow along surface. We ha already have our stones and our settings selected. So now we want the base surface, which is the blue surface it's on, the, the round one. And we're going to click on this corner over here, which coincides with exactly this corner here on our target surface. And we should have the settings and stones in the middle after that, as you can see. Okay, and this is going to be our template to create the twisted shank that we are then going to flow back along the surface. So, for a, for a moment now, we can just head on over to what we've done here and hide that. Um, hope you're still following along with me. I'm trying to make this as short and painless temp tutorial as possible. Um, I realize it might be a bit fast. Um, so, what we've got here. We are going to use the side of this setting um, to create and what I'm going to do is show you this uh, you can see how the side of the setting actually comes out of this uh, out of one of the claws on the side and then you have the twist in the shank. So how we do that, how we do that is quite simple. We are going to extract a surface from that setting. So let's go ahead and do that. So it, first of all, we're going to extract the surface, but we're going to make a copy of it. So just press on copy before you do that. I'm heading over to my layer called Twist Shank Flat because this is going to be my flat version of the shank. I'm going to extract that surface and then I can pretty much hide the rest of these objects here too. I'll put that off. And from the top viewport, I'm going to create a curve that mimics that twist that we want. So I'm going to head on over to my curves and curve interpolate and I'm going to create the master curve for this. So I'm just going to click somewhere along the bottom here that would be the center of my curve. And I'm going to create that twist as simple as possible. Put that point curve around about there. You can actually click to the middle of our surface and then just bring that point back and you'll see why I do that. So we can move this curve point out of here like that a bit. And we are going to offset this curve by two millimeters. So one on either side. So we're just going to go over to offset curve and we are going to click on both sides in our command line and our distance will be one. Now we don't want to close this curve as you can see it wants to do here. We want it open so we're just going to go to cap and make the cap none. That should make it an open curve and this actually looks a bit too wide. Maybe make it distance of 0.8. That's better. Okay, it's a little bit more delicate. And if we move something on this, it should move our offset curve there. That's great, because then we can make alterations in the, the shape of our curve. At the same time, what we're going to do is we're going to take the two outside curves. Make sure you have your record history on for all of this. And we're going to mirror those two outside curves over. So that we have a, ah, no, I need a different middle point. I'm going to mirror that over. And the middle point will be here, the middle of our surface. And that way we can see what our twist is looking like. So maybe, for instance, this is a little bit going out too much. So now it's nice because it's changing everything as we go and I can 
could bring that in a little bit more, for example. You can bring that in a little bit more as well. There we go. And what's important here is that we want this to meet in a point at the bottom. And you'll find out why later. Uh, but that will be quite important. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our uh, cut out on the side here that these curves are going to to uh, join up with so let's grab our interpolation on curve and I'm going to go up to where this prong ends in its straight line and I'm going to follow that a little bit as I create something with a slight curve in it here I wanted to mold, meld, like mold, melt into the into the setting. I'm gonna do the same here on that side. Grab there where it ends, and I'm gonna end it around about here somewhere. And then what we're gonna do is where's the end of our curve? There it is. Okay. That'll make sense soon enough, you'll see. So, what we can do is we can literally split the surface with these curves, these three curves. And we can get rid of the rest. Okay. And what's left of this we are going to duplicate the edges of. So let's go ahead and duplicate the edges that we haven't got yet. The rest is made up of curves already. And if we delete this now, we will have a profile curve. And uh, uh, we don't want that yet. We want to keep that. Actually, we can delete that because we still got the original. Um, and we are going to join this into four separate curves. So we've got the two side curves and we have the top and bottom curves. And now we can join up the curves that we've created with the points on the ends. And if that doesn't look good, it's because when you make an offset, it adds more points. You can just delete a couple of curves here to give it a smoother look. Delete that. And can pull this curve up a little bit. There we go. So it looks a bit smoother. So now that we've got that in sorted out, we are going to create another profile curve on the other end. What we want to do first is we want to join these two, two curves together on the midsection of our, our surface, just like that. And, <clears throat> and we're going to trim these two, or actually we could just use the the, the the first one and delete a few points and then move those points together by also bringing that into the into the center so let's just have a look here okay and here we are going to create a profile curve in the middle here. And it's going to start out as a square. So we're just going to take the rectangle curve tool and we're going to create the curve around a curve. Choose that center curve and just snap on the end point. And we're going to make this a two 
by two millimeter square and you can see it's, it's rotated perpendicular to our curve uh, what we're going to do as well is <clears throat> we're going to explode this and the top and the and the bottom actually no we'll leave the bottom flat but the top we are going to rebuild using our rebuild curve, curve command with four points and we're just going to lift those top four points up a bit to create a rounded profile on top and now we can we can join that up again actually no um scrap that don't join it you've got four separate curves here actually what's going to happen is um we are going to use these curves along with these curves to create uh, single surfaces that we're going to join so what we want to do here is we want to bring these two curves up First, I want to um, maybe align that here instead. Switch off that surface, align it to the corner, align this to that corner, delete that point. And then copy these two curves up. Just select them, go to your move tool or your copy tool and bring them up to the corners of your profile curve. And on the other side, we are going to move that up into the corner so that it's on It's on the other two, two curves. I can put the points on. Have a look here that they're not too many points. That's fine. And now we're going to go ahead and we are going to sweep two curves, sweep two rails with each of these curves. Okay. Uh, and again for the side here and the same for the bottom the same for the bottom it's supposed to have a little bit of a rounded base what would actually be nice is to sweep the two curves of body surface edge just the one side so it kind of remains bulgy at the bottom here. It looks nice. And then the top. Uh, ah, grabbed the wrong curve there. Top and there we go. Okay, good. There we go. Now you can join these surfaces up. We join that. Just flip that surface and put that into our twist shank flat layer and mirror that over and we're gonna unhide our uh, there we go we're gonna unhide our uh, settings so you can see what it looks like there we go and yeah it's joining nicely into into the claw kind of supposed to look like it's one with a claw in fact what we want to do here is is one of the surfaces and i'm going to take the one that was copied so that um if i make changes to it it won't make the other one change i'm just going to grab my cage edit tool uh, bounding box world's coordinate system and just leave the points on as is i'm going to change my uh y to uh, three and that should do it 
because all we actually want to do is lift one mm, no we need more we need more points along this so let's go back to page edit select captive object bounding box world coordinate system and what we want is more points along our x-axis so let's just change that to, to seven uh, so I don't want to disturb this setup on the end here and here we can now take the middle points or just the top just the top points here as you can see here it's just the two top points and just pull them out a bit so that there's a bit of an overlap and there we go that's good okay and on this end what's going to happen is we're going to cut these two pieces there where they intersect just be sure when you use that cutting plane that it doesn't go all the way through your twist object so let's take those two objects and trim them that's gone and we are going to join this And you'll see what we will do later with this bottom piece and how we're going to join that up on the ring eventually. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to flow this back onto the surface. Uh, just one more thing I want to do before I do that. Um, I want to close it. So on this end, I'm just going to extract the outside surface. Just that outside surface and you can put this off again and we're going to trim that surface because if we switch this off you'll see these are open poly surfaces on there on this end so what we're going to do is we're going to trim that surface with this object so that we can close it up if it's not working on the other side just do a, a curve from surface and use an object intersection and you can see immediately where it's not joining or where it's not pushing through um, if that's the case just move it back a smidgen uh, 0 0.001 should do it and we try to trim it again and there we go we can delete that middle section now we can join all of that and we'll just have to do this bit at the end when we've got it back on the ring. Okay, so now we go to our deformation tools and we hop into flow along surface. We grab this twisted, twisted shank and select this corner of our base surface. We will select this corner of our ring target surface and just press enter wait a second why oh, didn't that work so select object base surface target surface ah must have done something wrong there and that looks good okay super okay so now we can switch this back off again we can hide all of that and we can mirror this over the other side and switch off our UV unwrap surface and that's looking rather nice and at the bottom this is going to be a very simple solution we are just going to zoom onto the extents on all our windows and at the bottom what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a cut plane that should intersect with the point where these two surfaces come together so I'm just going to use that as my inflection point there, right there because at the bottom we could eventually bring that in a bit 
Just rotate that touch. You can mirror that over. Trim these two cut plans with one another. Here we go. And now we're going to trim both surfaces with the cut planes. Okay. So what you have now is you should have a nice straight cut. There we go. And we're going to use these thing, these two sides. Uh, we're going to use the blend tool to bring these two sides together. So let's just hop in over to Twisted Shank Flow on the surface. We'll put that in there. And we can switch off couple of our other layers including our ring size and our ring size should be right and our curves okay and hop on over to blend surface there we go now what's very important with blend surface is you have to start if you're in your first edge uh, also first go to your uh, command line and switch off your chain edges you don't want your chain edges on, otherwise it's going to try and auto-select everything. And very often it's not, not unless you're working with very simple surfaces, it's not the result you want. It's not the edges you want to input. So we're going to start by selecting the segments for our first edge. And we have to do it in the right row, right order. Uh, so if I start here on the top surface of the right-hand side of the shank, then when I go to my second edge, I will have to start at the same point and do the same uh, con uh, uh, um, clo clockwise or anti-clockwise direction as I did for the first edge. So we're going to go clockwise here and select our edges. Uh, if it's doing that, it means that there's one little edge here that it's not seeing. Ah, that's why. Because we have... An unjoined edge here. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to fix that first. So, best way to fix that would be to do a sweep on two rails. Use top and bottom edge. Okay, join. that's because I did not work precise that's my punishment for not being precise enough and I mean that sincerely it's, it always pays to be very very precise when you are modeling from the beginning otherwise you can go back and restart everything on enormous projects and it can be very annoying and time-consuming so that wasn't too hard. Uh, so we are just going to go back to blend edge, blend surface, start again. And, and I didn't do the chain edges, so chain edges off. Now I can select the first edges. Now because I got this tiny little surface here, I have to select it too. And go around. There we go. Now you'll see it says select segment for second edge in the command line. So I have to start at the same edge and choose the same direction. So we do that again with the tiny little surface. Bad, Eva. Very bad. There we go. And now it's giving me my, my direction of my curves. Um, if the arrow is pointing in the other direction than the one across from it, then you know you're going to get a twisted, a twisted blend. So this looks right. And we should be able to have a tangency here. There's something strange happening in my surface. Why is that? Hmm. Uh... Let me look here what's going on. Okay. Oh, start with a straight section. We'll go with a straight section. Seems to do that clean enough. Go back to the tangency and have a look what's going on here. 
Mm. It's a bit too complex. So we're just going to go for a position. Hold it in position. You can switch the same height off. And say, okay. And that's our joint piece. We just join that up. So at this point, we can go into our rendered viewport. Or just switch those ISO curves and edges off. Have a look at this. At the flow here. Hmm. You know what's also an option? Let's explore that. Before we join this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my curves and I'm going to use curve blend. Switch our curves back on again. To there we go to get something that looks a little bit more organic here. I'm going to build up our surface ourselves instead of using the blend surface tool. The blend surface tool is not always the solution for everything. And you can switch the, the ring size curves into the other layer. There we go. And what we'll do is we will just duplicate the edges duplicate the borders of these surfaces there we go and we will split those using the four curves we created and now we're going to use sweep two rails to create our shack. There we go. That looks much better. I started with the side of the ring. Okay. And then the same on top. You can use the surface edges. At least it will run along the tangency. That's much nicer. surface edge and surface edge on the last edge okay and let's join that up great here we go now that looks nice you can put a little stamp in there like a 750 stamp and there you go that's your ring we'll be taking a little summer vacation so we'll be back in august with new tutorials but until then, we wish you all a great summer time or winter time, depending on where you are in the hemisphere. And uh, we hope you stick around for more of our tutorials. Just uh, hit that like button and subscribe if you want to. Uh, we'll see you around.